Fuck you, you old bastard. Come on. I'm awesome at this game. No. No. Oh, what are you doing? I want to visit you tonight in your dreams, you little bastard. Kids, if you can't beat him, come. <laughs> to my channel hope everyone's doing well out there and we've made it to freddy's dead god help me all right yes this was supposed to be the final nightmare on elm street film that's how they envisioned it and this film is freddy's dead the final nightmare now this film came out september 13th of 1991 a little over two years after the dream child it's rated r an hour and 29 minutes long on video theatrically it was 100 minutes long why they cut the footage out to make it shorter i can't find any reasons for it i don't know why they did it but it's shorter on home video. Had a budget of $11 million, and at that point was the highest budgeted Nightmare film until a new Nightmare came out three years later. And when it was released in 91, it made 34.8, so it did make a lot of money for New Line. And this movie, after the reception of the fifth film, I think they realized they ran this franchise into the ground. So they decided to give us one more entry and send Freddy out in a high note. Unfortunately, they didn't do any of that but we'll talk about it. So Rachel Talley directed this film. She had been associated with New Line for a while. She'd worked with Bob Shea in the offices, and then she kind of worked her way into productions because she worked on the production of, she was one of the producers on Nightmare on Elm Street 3, 4, and then finally she asked to direct this film, and Bob Shea said okay and gave her to go ahead. Now cast-wise, we have Robert England back as Freddy Krueger. Lisa Zane, Billy Zane's sister, plays Maggie in this film. Sean Greenblatt plays John Doe, the last remaining child of Springwood. And we'll get into that. Leslie Dean plays Tracy. And Leslie Dean was actually in um, Freddy's Nightmare episode. And she was in 976 Evil for Robert England, his directorial debut. Ricky Dean Logan plays Carlos, which is probably my favorite character in this film. Brecken Meyer plays Spencer. This is his first theatrical film before he wanted to do Road Trip and other those TV shows he's been in. And Yapik Code is in this film as Doc, and I have no idea why Yapik Code is in this film. I like him as an actor. He must have did it for the money because he's not in a very good film, and we'll get into that. Now, th th this film, again, they had many scripts written for this film, and actually one person who wrote a script for this film was none other than Peter Jackson, but they didn't go with his script, but that did forge a, a friendship or at least a re relationship between Peter Jackson and New Line. So when they were starting to develop and talk about doing a Lord of the Rings film, well, Peter Jackson got the gig and directed a spectacular trilogy. Now, for this film, we start off, let's get into some of the plot here because I'm going to probably shoot on this film because it's an awful film. I hadn't seen this film in about 15, 16 years. Watching it last night, I hate it just as much now as I did as a kid. This movie is god-awful, and whoever came up with this shit... I can't believe anybody actually thought this, these were good ideas, but we'll get into that. We, we were introduced to John Doe in the beginning of the film, and he's the last remaining child of Springwood. All the kids that we've come to find out have been slaughtered by Freddy in their dreams, and nobody knows why. Now, you would think after all these years and all these kids getting killed, there would have been a major investigation into the town and what the hell's going on, but no. Now all the adults live in town and just meander about, babbling about nonsense because all the kids are gone and are lost. It's dumb as hell. So he's having a nightmare with Freddy Krueger, and even when I was a kid, when I first saw this on video, you knew you were in trouble when Freddy goes by the window because his house is dropping, and he's on a broom with a witch's hat on and the cape, and he goes, I'll get you, my pretty red Wizard of Oz. You should know right there what kind of movie you're dealing with, and it's not good. And Carlos, there's, the dream sequence is extended, and Carlos, or not Carlos, John Doe gets thrown through this, we never knew this was a thing, this like invisible force field around Springwood and Freddy's basically using him to get to more kids now that there's no kids to haunt in Springwood. But he hits his head and he loses his memory. That's why he's called John Doe. He has no memory of where he came from. He has an amnesia. He ends up at this shelter. We were introduced to all these kids. Lisa Zane, she is one of the, the adults that run this shelter in this city. We don't know what city it is, but it looks a lot like LA. And you up at Cody's, the doc at this shelter and works with Lisa Zane. And we're introduced to each kid. And the kids are probably the best part of this, honestly. Um, they're not given a whole lot to do. But acting-wise, I think they're probably the best part of this film. 
And we come to find out that Lisa Zane realizes with some clues that John Doe is from Springwood. So she gets puts him in a van and they go to Springwood. And the other kids had hid in the back. So they, she discovers them and they end up at this carnival where we see Roseanne Barr and Tom Arnold in their cameo. Why the hell they were in this film? Who knows? But they were in it. They're in it for a couple seconds. And all it is the adults walking around lost because there's no kids around. It's dumb Yes, it's a little weird, but it doesn't make any sense in this franchise. Now, if you watch the documentary Never Sleep Again, I'm plugging that once again. Even Ra Rachel Talley even says she was influenced by Twin Peaks because it was big at the time. It's like, why are you letting a TV show influence you? Or why? Why are you doing that? This is a nightmare in Elm Street. You're big enough. You don't need to be influenced by other f shit like that. And, they, and one of the kids even drops a Twin Peaks reference during the film. It's like, why? Why, 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 why would you do this? I don't understand it. But anyway, and, and people just walk into other people's houses in this film. When they go to Springwood, they're just walking into houses. It's like, what the fuck is going on here? And soon enough, we realize that, well, they think John Doe is Freddy Krueger's son. Well, once they leave, John Doe gets killed. And they go back to their shelter, and Freddy follows suit. Like, the force field is gone, and Freddy can leave Springwood. None of these rules have ever been set up, but they set them up here. And they try to give backstory to Freddy Krueger. They show him as a teenager getting beat by Alice Cooper and as a cameo as Freddy's dad or stepdad. And they show Robert England as Freddy when he was human and with his daughter, which ends up being Lisa Zane's character. And it was Lisa Zane's the daughter finds Freddy killing the mother. And it's all very boring and nonsensical. Um, some of the death, there's not really any good deaths in this film either to be honest. Um, Carlos's death is okay, but it's so cheesy leading up to it that when it happens, it's just like, okay, whatever. Um, there is a cool scene though when Carlos is sleeping in the van in the back of the van and the kids are trying to get out of Springwood while Lisa Zane's character and John Doe are doing some more investigating and they can't get out. They keep going in circles. And Tracy yells out to Carlos, get the map out. I got it. We got to find our way out of this place. And he's dreaming and he's opening the map and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and written in red it just says you're fucked and he snaps out of the dream and he goes the map says you're fucked and i laughed at that and i was probably the only enjoyment i got out of this film because the rest of it's got awful um it is a funny moment but overall the kills are lifeless the effects most of the effects don't work now breck and meyer gets the video game kill where he's in the video game and freddie's using his version of the power glove and we get the famous line now you're pl I'm playing with power it all is cheesy and it sucks the effects don't work and then we get to skip forward uh, some, through some things. We get to the end where Lisa Zane finally realizes she's Freddy Krueger's daughter and we have her final battle at the shelter. And the final 10 minutes of the film was in 3D. Now, I never got to see this, but there's a moment in the film where Lisa Zane's character puts on the 3D glasses, which from what I saw in the documentary and read, that was supposed to key the audience to put the 3D glasses on. And it's basically the same shit we saw in the 80s with Friday the 13th 3D. People point shit to screen. It doesn't really need to be pointed at the screen. It looks unnatural. And some god-awful CGI effects at the end when Freddy gets blown up by a pipe bomb because they bring him into the real world. This is all shit we've seen before. And never killed Freddy before, but this is how they decided to kill Freddy in this one. I'll contend the ending of Part 4, How to Dispatch Freddy, or Part 3 especially, was way better than this. And this was supposed to be the final one. Again, Freddy went out with a whimper, not a bang. Even though they used a pipe bomb, no pun intended. Um, the fight scene looks unchoreographed, made up on a day. It's sloppy. It's not exciting. It's badly shot. It's garbage. It really is. And Lisa Zane is good in some scenes. Other scenes, she looks lost. Like it could have been direction she was given. I don't know. But through the whole film, her performance is so uneven that I can't even say she gave a good performance. Sometimes she's okay. Sometimes she looks lost in a scene. And that could have been the way she was directed. I don't know. But most of the acting in this film is not that good. Even the op at Coda, he's okay. The kids are probably the best part. Because even Robert England's performance is Freddy, I hate it. And he even says in the documentary, they decide to go Looney Tunes, like make a Looney Tunes cartoon. It doesn't work. It's like, you're your own thing. You're a slasher film. This is supposed to be the final one. And you're cracking jokes and one-liners left and right. I mean, take it seriously. Take lessons from Friday 13th Part 4 to Final Chapter. Now, yes, I know that was not the final chapter. But at least Joseph Zito and Tom Savini, they had the balls to go for it and take Jason out at the end in a really cool, violent way. In this one, they did shit that Nancy Thompson did in the first film. And some of the other films they did, 
and Freddie always lived after that. And you're supposed to tell me this is the final one. It just doesn't work. It's it's creatively bankrupt. There's not a whole lot to enjoy for this film. It's pretty. It's badly shot. I can't give it props there. And I know Rachel Talley went on to direct other things, and she's still directing to this day a lot of TV work. I know this is her first film, but it's badly shot. It's the the script obviously was a mess. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They're trying to give Freddy more backstory. It's like this is the sixth film. We don't need more backstory on Freddy Krueger. This is all pointless shit. And he introduced those three dream demons that give Freddy his power that went to him when he was getting burned alive and offered him to live immortal, basically. And he said yes. It's like, do we really need any of this shit? And it just gave you and the effects on those three creatures suck. It's awful. And then when Freddy blows up and his head goes keeps coming out, it's like. It, it's awful stuff. It's really, truly terrible stuff. This is like a made-for-TV, made-for-DVD freaking horror film. It's awful. It's like amateur hour watching this film. And I thought 5 was bad. This is this makes 5 look like a decent goddamn movie. There's just bad decisions that they're bad decisions made for this film. Um, it's unfortunate that this is how they decided to end Freddy. And you could tell they were just... This was a cash grab. There, there's nothing good about this film, really. Um... From the sets look cheap. The way it's shot is just... And I even rip off Sam Raimi in a couple shots in this film. It's just not well shot. The acting's not... It's okay at best. This is the worst performance for Freddy Krueger in all the films from Robert Englund. And I get that he was just doing what he was told or what they agreed to do. It's just a bad film. It's, it sucks. It's a shit. It's a piece of shit, this film. It really is. And I'll probably never watch it again. I bought the Blu-ray box set, but this one is one that... I, my mind has not changed in 15, 16 years since I last seen it. It's an awful goddamn movie, and I can't recommend it at all. But uh, this was New Line's first 3D film, and it had the highest highest opening weekend of the franchise, believe it or not. Well, with the promise of it being the final one, it got people excited to go see it. Until Freddy vs. Jason came out, then that was the highest grossing one. Um, the, they didn't have permission to use the Power Glove or from Nintendo, so they kind of made their own Freddy version of it. Um, so yeah, they didn't have permission. They never got sued by Nintendo, though, either, which is kind of funny. Um, when, Like I said before, when Maggie puts the 3D glasses on with 10 minutes to go at the last act, that's when you're supposed to put, that's when you were supposed to, as the audience in the theaters, put your 3D glasses on. It's just a gimmick, and they even admit to it in the documentary, it's just a gimmick. It's, 3D always was not a great thing, at least not in my mind. Um, this is actually the first film in the Nightmare franchise that a woman directed. I thought that was of note. I think it's cool that they gave her a shot. She worked her way up the ladder at New Line and gave her a shot. I think they chose the wrong person to direct this film. Um, I think there would have been, a, if you're going to go out in the last one, they should have hired a seasoned director, somebody who was, you know, knew what they were doing and that could deliver the final f nightmare that Freddy deserved. And this was not it. This is an awful movie from top to bottom. Yes, it made money, and that and but this movie also caused them to bring Wes Craven back to make the new Nightmare to kind of wash away the stink off of the the last two films, five and six. So at least we got that in '94. But this film, I'm gonna give it a one out of ten. This film's like on par with Friday Thirteenth Party, which I also can't stand. This is a one out of ten type of movie. This is just dog shit. Um, it's hard to re I can't recommend it if you're more. Of a, morbidly curious check it out but it's an awful film uh just terrible and for the budget they had this movie just looks cheap all over the place so yes one out of ten for freddy's dead the final nightmare what are your thoughts on this movie leave a comment down below let me know hit the thumbs up hit the subscribe button share this video like would appreciate that we got two more films in the nightmare elm street franchise that i'm going to do and then we'll do a ranking video after that we got the new nightmare coming up next week and the remake and then i'll do a ranking video so until then i hope you're all doing well out there and i'll see you soon bye